Welcome to Hanging at the Hangar Bar. I'm Scott. I'm Candace. I'm Lariah. And I'm Lacey. Grab a drink and come hang with us at the Hangar Bar. Hey, welcome back to Hanging at the Hangar Bar. This is actually episode one. If you listen to our first one, we're calling that one episode zero, where you just get to learn a little bit about us and why we're hanging out at the Hangar Bar. So go back and listen to that one if you haven't yet. Today, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the first trip that we all took to Disney together. We actually made the decision to drive all the way down to Orlando, and it was fi- filled with adventure and laughs and lots of different things. So we're just going to start by asking the the group a a quick question. What was your favorite part of driving to Disney World? I know for myself, first of all, our trip to getting coffee right as we're exiting Lincoln is my favorite part of any vacation. Um, And honestly, I loved when we would just be in the car And had nothing else to do except to entertain each other with Disney questions. What's your favorite ride? What's your favorite food? I'll never get tired of that because my answers always change and everyone else's does because how can you just pick one? So I just thought that was fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I loved the little moments of Disney trivia. It was, what, a 24-hour drive? Something Mm -hmm, like that, 21, 24, something somewhere in there. And the fact that we were four, we're friends, so we all get along. It wasn't like we were ready to to throttle one another at at any point during the trip. So just some of the the random breaks of silence of that Disney trivia where we'd hear Lacey or Lariah from the backseat holler out, well, what do you guys think about this? (laughs) <laughs> and then that would go on for an hour. We just talk about that for an hour. And if you think about it, that's really one of the reasons why we decided to start this podcast, just because that was so much fun. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. I think for me, one of my favorite parts of the the drive down there was how hard we laughed when we saw the first person who had a scooter tied behind their van. We had, we'd been making jokes about scooter people at Disney World. If you have to, to ride a scooter at Disney World, no... No, nothing against that at all. We, But if you've ever been to Disney World, you know that there's a certain subset of people that ride scooters that take up the entire 15 foot wide walkways and will just run into you. They will run over you. And so we had joked about that the entire way down there. And then we saw like somebody with Florida license plates with a scooter on a tray behind their minivan. And we just busted out laughing for probably 15 minutes on the drive down there. That is probably my favorite memory from the drive down. One of my favorite memories, and there are a lot of them, both of which have already been mentioned. But um, when we travel together, we always seem to find what we dub as the center of the universe. And we seem to always take a picture of that person. It's usually never of their face. It's usually the back of their head or the back of themselves. And it's just a fun little tradition that's just, it, it's 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 a good time. And it's not meant to be harmful. It's just, you know, you can tell those people who think they're the center of the universe. And they deserve to be immortalized on digital film. And in videos. And in videos, yes. Forgot about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, what about you? What was your favorite part of the trip down there? Um, I think when we got to meet Bigfoot. Definitely. We were going through Tennessee and we saw a Bigfoot jazz festival. Didn't get a stay for that, but wish we would have. <laughs> but, you know, Scott and Candace were like, oh my gosh, there's a Bigfoot gas station. So we drove straight to that gas station to use the restrooms. And they had like a what, 10 foot tall Bigfoot? Did anybody get their picture taken with that Bigfoot or did we decide that wasn't worth it? No, no, I was too nervous. Afraid <laughs> <laughs> it was going to come to life yes. and want to come to Disney with us. Yeah, well, that would have been fun. <laughs> there wasn't room in the car. <laughs> we needed to take him back to Expedition Everest. Yes. To visit his cousin. Yeah. The Yeti. 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 <laughs> not the same. No, <laughs> sorry. Worry. I'm so sorry. They're not the same. Distant relatives. That's right. Yeah. And then the other memory... We mentioned it right before we started recording, 
but we checked into a hotel. We won't n- mention the name brand of the hotel, but we were just sitting there. We had ordered Chipotle for dinner, right? And we're sitting there in the hotel room after eight or nine hours of driving for the day, just relaxing. And all of a sudden, Candace notices an ant on the nightstand. And then I notice a trail of ants up the wall. And we just looked around and that room had ants everywhere. That was just, that was in Tennessee too, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We stopped in Tennessee. That's, that will be something that will haunt me forever. We, We fortunately did not have to stay in that room. We, we were contemplating just wasting the money and going to a different hotel, but they got us into a different room that. Fortunately, the only ants we found in there were the ones that had crawled on us, and then we got them, we got those taken care of. But does anybody else have a memory, a not so great memory of the drive down? That would be my big one, and yeah. that's going to stick with me for a long time because I hate ants. I hate them. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty much the worst thing we encountered on the way down. Like, luckily, luckily. We didn't have to experience anything else Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, and the other really good thing I liked about the trip down is Candace, we we had planned, what, two nine-hour days and then like a five-hour day to get to Disney. Candace made the executive decision, what, two or three weeks before we left that we don't want to be staying at the Georgia-Florida line with four or five hours to go. Let's just go ahead and get longer each day and make it into Orlando. I think that was a fantastic choice. Mm -hmm. We didn't get a Disney room that first night, but it put us into Disney with an entire day, which gave us an extra breakfast reservation that we wouldn't have gotten. It got us, that was our Ohana breakfast, right? No, that was Kona Cafe. Kona Cafe, that's right. Same same hotel, different restaurant. Um, See, this is why Candace is the math. Mm -hmm. They can't see you (laughs) spreading your arms, but just for... She just did a ta-da. You could just put in a ta-da and call it good. (laughs) (laughs) So thinking about when we got to Disney, what was your favorite day one experience? I will say waking up in Orlando, being minutes away from Disney World, was the best feeling ever. So I applaud you, Candice, Mm -hmm. for your amazing travel agent skill. That was incredible. And driving under the tunnel or the archway, Mm -hmm. that's the best. You just, once you pass through that, you just smile and you know that you just feel like a four-year-old kid again. You're just like, all right, here we go. Well, and for, for people that haven't been to Disney World, the the gateway or the archway that she's talking about that doesn't really lead you anywhere. I mean, it leads you onto the road systems of the Walt Disney world property, but the, it's not like you drive through this gateway and the magic kingdom is on your right. The Epcot straight ahead, animal kingdoms over there. No, no. I mean, you don't see anything that looks Disney other than this archway. And so you drive a drive, drive, and you see the, the traffic signs that change color to Disney colors and you eventually find your way to where you need to be. But I agree. It's just you drive through there and it's like, okay, I'm in the magic now. Vacation can start. Um, yeah, so one of the things also we did um, on our first day besides, you know, just waking up, getting to drive straight to Disney to, you know, eat breakfast Um we got to resort hop, which is something I never thought about before. And for me personally, this was my first time. And I'm so grateful I got to go with these guys, but they have all been before. I hadn't. So it was brand new experience for me. Um, But yeah, the resort hopping was something so cool. I loved it. And I think it should be a part of our future all of our future trips together because it was just so much fun and like that was definitely one of my favorite parts of the whole trip. Yeah Candace and I actually what was that two or three trips ago we kind of figured out that resort hopping was a good way to sort of break up your vacation too so we did it on day one but didn't we also have a day in the middle where we didn't have anything planned Mm -hmm. so we did a little bit more then but that is a a life hack a Disney life hack if you're going to be there for a week 
don't get park tickets for every day. Go do, take the monorail loop and go to all the monorail hotels and just look at them. I, that is some of my favorite memories of any of our Disney trips is just getting to explore parts of Disney that people that are so focused on rides, rides, rides just miss out on. And I think another part of, that a lot of people don't think about is you go to Disney World on vacation. Vacations are supposed to be somewhat relaxing. And I can tell you with 100% certainty that most people do not relax on a Disney vacation. And I think that's an element that is sorely lacking from a lot of people's experience because there are a lot of activities to do that aren't in the parks. And we're going to talk about some of those a little later um, in this episode. But I think it's very important to kind of don't plan your trip based on what's right for other people. Plan it what's right for you. Such great advice. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. My the days we spent out of the parks versus the days we spent at the parks. Yeah, you got it right. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I I loved them equally because mm-hmm. Disney World is not about the parks like Candace said. And like she said, do Disney how you want to do it. There's no wrong way. You can have a relaxing vacation, and I feel like we did a lot, but there were also some good relaxing days mixed in. Mm -hmm. So We may judge you for your right way, but there really is no wrong way. (laughs) (laughs) But if that's right for you, that's right for you. Okay, so what else about that trip? What's your, we talked about the trip down there. What's your favorite memory of the entire trip? After Hours in Magic Kingdom. Mm. Um, Talk more about that. So... Um, the year that we went, they, the, uh, Disney world actually started doing what they called after hours events in some of the different parks. And I think it was the animal kingdom and magic kingdom. And they would plan these hard ticketed events. And when I say hard ticketed, I mean that you have to buy separate admission to get into these events. Um, but you go into the parks as early as seven, four, four. Okay. Thank you. It's seven now. That's a recent change to their. Like the Halloween party and the Christmas party, they've changed them to seven, but it used to be four. used to be four. Okay. So you could get in as early as four o'clock in the evening and then stay there until the end of the event with your extra hard ticket. And that's what she said. (laughs) (laughs) And our event happened to end at midnight. So we got to be in Magic Kingdom for pretty much an entire park day, if you think about it, because it was eight hours and we did go over there at four granted we had to be amongst the regular (laughs) people (laughs) i'm digging myself a hole here and it sounds terrible but okay so the regular park visitors the people that had paid for that day's admission without admission into the after hours events they were around until after fireworks which was 9 30 ish yeah um, and then from, from the point where they were asked to leave the park, we had the whole thing pretty much to ourselves. And there was not just our group, but, um, there were times where we were walking through different areas of Magic Kingdom and we were the only people in those areas. Um, but they also offered free snacks. There was popcorn, there was frozen treats, there was soda. Um, I think Casey's Corner was open. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that wasn't free, but I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was probably one of my favorite experiences ever, uh, in all the times that I've been going to Disney world. And one of our future podcast plan podcasts is all about dream vacation. So don't be surprised if you don't hear about these after hours events again. Um, but yeah, to your, your point, Candace, I loved like when we went back by um, Gaston's tavern, we were back there and we, we went back to use the bathroom there was nobody back there and we stood there for what 10 or 15 minutes and nobody walked by because there's not really any rides back there so the one of the benefits to the after hours too we we kind of laughed and felt really high and mighty because we walked over to Peter Pan 
which you know Peter Pan's ride normally has a 60 to 75 minute wait at 9.30 when it shut off to regular park guests. We walked over there, flashed our little band. We walked straight onto Peter Pan's flight. And right after us, there was somebody who came in, didn't have the armband. They're like, nah, you got to get out of the park. So we like those are the kinds of things. Like so many people use that hard ticketed event to go on as many rides as they can get on. Just ride to ride to ride to ride because there is no wait. You could go on Splash Mountain time after time after time if that's what you wanted to do. And just absolutely love that. But I my favorite part was just how quiet it was like out front by main street usa when we were leaving nobody there they and there were probably what i don't want to guess it four or five thousand people had tickets to this event Maybe. Yeah. so like you think about how big disney is not that many people in that amount of space and even if we were all leaving at the same time main street usa felt empty mm-hmm. you could take pictures of the castle with nobody in them um our our cover art for our podcast was based on a picture that we took that night there was nobody in the background. It was phenomenal. And part of the, one of my favorite things about that night, in addition to what I've already mentioned, is that, like, you'd walk through these areas where nobody else was, and they still had the ambient music going. So it was like you were honestly in a story, or in just this, your own little, like, fantasy land, for lack of a better term. And this awesome music was going and you could actually hear it and enjoy it and just kind of immerse yourself in being in the in the Magic Kingdom when it was dark. It was amazing. I love it. Favorite memories? Um, I know for me, um, I have dreamed of seeing those fireworks since I was little. Mm-hmm. So that they did not disappoint I think I told everybody I just can't wait to see the fireworks and like I was in awe like incredible. Which was your favorite fireworks show, Mariah? I just like um, Happily Ever After. Okay. I think all of them were phenomenal. Yeah, because you you saw Happily Ever After twice, right? On our Magic Kingdom yes. day and our yeah. After Hours event day, and then. Yeah we can talk a little bit more about how we saw the Epcot fireworks. Cause that was pretty cool too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll get to that. that when we talk to talk about favorite restaurants and that kind of thing, probably um, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Lacey, how about you? Favorite part of the favorite memory of the trip? Uh, favorite meant, well, I, I don't know. I have a lot, but <laughs> I, this, 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 yeah, it was a great trip, but honestly, this was the first time I have ever tried Joffrey's coffee. Mm. Oh, and it has changed my life. I <laughs> order, like, my bank account is very upset with me because of that. I buy Joffrey's online now all the time. Um, but, yeah, just going to Joffrey's. I loved the day we went to Hollywood Studios Found Joffrey's, thank you to Scott, who would ask every single cast member anything we ever needed. (laughs) Scott will not hesitate to ask. Um, We found a Joffrey's after writing, what, Tower of Terror? Tower of Terror. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lorraine and Scott got a huge, perfect pink sprinkled donut. So huge. We will post a picture of it. Um, It was humongous. I got my vanilla soy latte iced. I was in heaven. Joffrey's, man. I will I will just talk about it all, all this time. Joffrey's is your ride and die? That's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yes, it's better than Starbucks. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'm not knocking it. There's Starbucks in every single park. Right. And if you need a coffee fix, that's a good cho- choice. But take the time, trust us, and try the Joffrey's. Because... Yeah, it hits differently. Mm-hmm. So speaking of the donut that Lariah and I shared, which I yes. swear is as big as a person's head, it was huge. So yeah, check out our Instagram that we're going to have, um, and you'll be able to see a picture of the donut that we're talking about in this episode. But let's go further with the food, just in, in memories of our trip. What was your favorite bite? That is so hard. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'll go back on my notes. <laughs> Nerd. 
Okay, <laughs> I, I will. <laughs> I will start. Uh, like when I say favorite bite on that trip, it was the subway and ne- no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm vegan. I'm the only vegan in this group, and everyone had to suffer because one of the only places that I know of, fast food places that we could stop at, was Subway. We have all had enough Subway to last us the the rest of our lives. So that's the inside joke there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, but seriously, my favorite bite when I when I think. When I asked that question, something popped into my mind, and it was at um, the, we know it as San and Helens. What's the actual name of it? La Hacienda de San and Hell. That's right. It's so, <laughs> I know it as San and Helens because I can't pronounce all of that, um, but there was a cheese fondue served with tortillas, like soft tortillas, that was just out of this world, like phenomenal. Officially, it's called queso fundido. Thank you, Map. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was my favorite bite of this entire trip. It, I don't think I would say that was my favorite bite in all of Disney, in all of my trips, but on this trip, that was my favorite bite. That is such a tough question because we ate so much good food this time. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I think I have mine. Um, so we had gone to 50s Primetime Cafe, and Candace was like, girl, you gotta get the fried chicken. And I got that fried chicken, and oh my god, holy crap, that was the best fried chicken I've ever had in my entire life. Loved it so much. And it would have been fine if it wasn't half a chicken, but I mean, the portion sizes of those things are just, I mean, it's amazing, but oh, I'm a big fan of breakfast food. All right. And I would have to say that that Tonga toast from, from Kona Cafe, what the kids call slapped. That, that is what it did. It slapped my <laughs> taste buds in the best possible way. I, <laughs> it's so good. If you've never tried it, yes, they can make it vegan. Yes, it doesn't have to be vegan, but it's amazing. And when I wake up every morning, that's what I want. And <laughs> it's just so good. Okay, I, I think I finally narrowed mine down. Just like flipping, I've got like a Rolodex in my head of all the places we ate and all the food that we had. I think my favorite bite this particular trip was the firecracker shrimp from Morimoto Asia. Ooh, that's a uh, good one. Um, we were actually on the um, deluxe dining plan, which we'll talk about later. Um, but part of that was that we each got an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. Plus a drink. Um, So the firecracker shrimp was my uh, appetizer for the evening. And oh my lord. It, yeah. Slapped? Uh, It slapped. It did. Thank you, (laughs) youngin. (laughs) Okay, staying on the the food theme. What was your, we, we did several character meals. So we did, what were our character meals? We did the garden grill. We did the Ohana breakfast. We did Tusker House. Tusker House. Were those those the only three character meals? I believe so. Yeah. yeah so of so. those three, which was your favorite character meal? And why was it your favorite character meal? Because of the food or because of the characters? That's Either. your reason. Whatever. Okay, I'll go first. I was treated like a princess at Tusker House because the sweet chef, walked me through the buffet telling me what was vegan and then when it came dessert time he brought me all of the vegan desserts to the table and it was just the sweetest gesture ever so I I love all of them but that experience different from your experience I know it just it made me feel so special and again that's why we love Disney because that's that's what you get there. That's a magical moment. Yeah. And that's their service. I mean, that's 
a lot of people don't go expecting that kind of service, but that's what you get. Mm -hmm. um, mine was Ohana times a thousand. Um, I love Lilo and Stitch. I love Stitch. I love Lilo. Both of them. So are you saying you love Lilo and Stitch? Yes. Okay. That is what I am saying. Good to know. <laughs> Just want to clear that up. Um, and yeah, we went there for breakfast on our off day. So it was a pretty chill day in general. But Candace had gotten our that little special treat for us. And I was just like. Oh, yeah, wasn't. That was the best. It was like a last minute reservation yeah. that I was yeah. watching for and I snapped it up. Yep. Way to go, Candace. Thanks. Yep. And like Lacey said, I was treated so well. I had a birthday pin on um, because the trip was like for my birthday as well as Lacey's birthday and Scott and Candace's anniversary. anniversary. And so we had all our little special pins and I got some special birthday treats. Um, our, the sweetest waiter um, ever to, um, I know I was getting to that, um, was serving us. And then our waiter gave me a card signed by um, Lilo and Stitch and Mickey and Pluto, I think was there too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we got to meet all of them. Stitch taught me how to surf, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was phenomenal. Yep. Um, honestly, I will probably say my favorite dining experience, character dining experience this time around would be Tusker House. Really? That surprises me. And it's not because of the food. It's because of how ridiculously adorable the characters were in their safari gear. Oh, yeah. oh, I agree. You don't get to see Mickey Mouse wearing a pith helmet and <laughs> safari khakis every day all over the place. So, yeah. Yeah, and mine, very similar reason to Candace's. Mine is the Garden Grill. We have not, I have not eaten breakfast there. And the breakfast platter that they bring out, so that's a, all you care to enjoy, but it's not a buffet. They bring it to your, your table in pans and that kind of thing. The, the breakfast was just traditional breakfast. Waffles, sausage, eggs, hash browns, that kind of thing. But there, they have their cinnamon roll that they bring out in a little cast iron pan, that next time I may tell them just to leave the rest of the food in the back and just bring me a cinnamon roll, and I'll just <laughs> nom, 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 nom on that. <laughs> but for a very similar reason, that's my favorite. How often do you get to see Mickey wearing farmer overalls? Yeah. While you're sitting in a spinning restaurant over the land. It, it's just it, that whole experience itself, and Chip and Dale and Pluto and Mickey are the characters there. They, it's the most, like, I think they spend the most time with you there mm -hmm. as of any of the character dinings that we've been to because the others are so big. They're, they're so, they have to move through so many tables and that kind of thing. When we went to breakfast, we saw Mickey twice. We saw Chip twice just mm -hmm. because they weren't super busy. And so they were, they were able to make it around more than once. And it was, that was my favorite character dining experience on this trip by far. Okay, we've got a few more minutes. We want to try and keep these podcasts to about a half hour. We're coming up on the, the end of that. So let's talk about the end of this trip. We can always revisit other things on this trip in, in future episodes. But let's talk about the end of the trip. So the sad day when you have to leave Disney property and start driving home. Um, what was, I think I know what everybody's answer is going to be, but what was the best part of the drive home? Stopping in Orange Beach. Mm-hmm. Everybody's yeah. nodding and agreeing <laughs> on that. So speaking of making a Disney trip your own, we had Lariah, who had never stepped foot in the ocean before. Mm -hmm. And Orlando's right in the middle of Florida, so we didn't get to see the ocean going down. And we just made the decision on the way back. Orange Beach, which is a, a town that Candace and I love to vacation in, um, they have a – it's about a seven-and-a-half-hour drive from Orlando, and it's right on the Gulf of Mexico. Beautiful white sand beaches. So we decided to make that one of our stops on the way back and just take a really slow trip back. back. So instead of two days, we drove back in three days. So we went to Orange Beach and spent the night, dipped our toes in the ocean. That was by, that's such a smart decision because if we had had to drive for 24 hours, two 12-hour days, 
after leaving Disney, I think we probably would have all tried to find a way to jump out of the car. But mm-hmm. stopping and, and having a bushwhacker in, in Orange Beach and swimming in the pool and getting our feet in the ocean was just such a relaxing end to that trip of we had the busy and, and hustle bustle of Disney for, for six days. Let's just sit back and relax for a few hours and found a really fun restaurant while we were there, um, Picnic Beach. I don't know that they're still around after the hurricane that came through, um, but fantastic restaurant. If they're still open and you're going to Orange Beach, make sure you check them out. Um, yeah, I, I would have to agree. I think we were all nodding with that was our favorite part of the drive back. Well, and I think part of that for me is that I am notorious for not being a very good departer. On departure day, my attitude goes south in a big way, and everybody in my travel party suffers for it, and I apologize to y'all. We understand. <laughs> um, but this particular trip and doing things how we did, it gave me something to look forward to because I had to leave my beloved Disney World, which is a big deal, and I don't like it at all. But looking forward to actually seeing the ocean and being back in Orange Beach, um, which is like a third home, it feels, anymore. Um, It was just better. It was better for my mental well-being. It was better for my travel party because they didn't have to deal with it. Um, So, yeah. I agree with you, Candice. Mm -hmm. I was going to say looking forward to one last thing before going home. It it made the drive back home bearable, even though we weren't the one driving, Scott. Yeah. (laughs) Which I seriously don't know how you do that. Yeah. I drive two hours and I need to take a seven hour nap. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was just a fantastic vacation. So we're going to wrap up this one here. Then the next episode that we have planned for you is all about dream vacations. So we kind of hinted at that a little bit in earlier in this one, but we're going to wrap this one up and just know that everybody, we want you to have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. We know we're going to as well and hope you enjoyed. If you have any feedback for us, just let us know. We'd be happy to listen to it. If you have anything you want us to talk about, we'll be happy to, to consider that as well. We'll look forward to connecting with you at the next one when we talk about our dream Disney vacations. Bye, everybody. See you real soon.